Hi, this is Michael M. Hotel. I'm in Atlanta. I'm on location in Atlanta at the Liberated Minds Black Homeschool and Education Expo, the eighth annual Liberated Minds Black Homeschool and Education Expo in Atlanta. How's everybody doing today? It's Saturday, uh, July 20th, 2019. We're broadcasting on uh, our Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network, and also on my YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotel, I-M-H-O-T-E-P. Okay, so if the Facebook live broadcast is not good, go over to my YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotel, I-M-H-O-T-E-P. YouTube is not good, go over to Facebook. So how's everybody doing? It's been a few days since I've been able to broadcast live. Uh, many of you all saw the interview I did with Queen Thais, who is the uh, founder and CEO of the Liberated Minds uh, Black Homeschool and Education Institute. And this is the eighth annual expo. Last night, I got into Atlanta last night, uh, yesterday evening, uh, there was the meet and greet at the uh, Redan uh, Event Center out in uh, Stone Mountain, Georgia. And today, uh, uh, Saturday and also Sunday, July 21st, we're at the uh, Piedmont, uh, the Georgia Piedmont Technical Center, okay? So uh, visit the website liberatedmindsexpo.com, liberatedmindsexpo.com for more information uh, about the expo, which is taking place uh, today, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. And then on Sunday, it gets started about uh, 10 a.m. also, because I do my presentation on Sunday, 10.45 a.m. to 11.45 a.m., dealing with uh, six principles of political self-defense. Uh, six principles of political self-defense and how policies impact the economic conditions of African Americans, okay? So how's everybody doing here? Who we have here? We got Alex, Mercedes, um, let's see, MercedesWafflesAndMore.com. Be sure those in the New Jersey and New York area, be sure to visit MercedesWafflesAndMore.com because they do uh, catering and they 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 um their specialty is vegan soul food vegan soul food so uh, mercedes waffles and more.com okay and uh if you want to uh have your event catered and you want some healthy uh, uh, uh vegan vegetarian food check out mercedes waffles and more okay uh erica in uh lynchfield uh litchfield uh minnesota lynch i was thinking of uh donald trump renee shirley uh, swollen because uh, I saw somebody I saw somebody say the, the rally he had the other night when they were uh, saying send her back it, it, it reminded them of a Klan rally okay all right so um, so I'm here this weekend and this is the uh, eighth annual Liberated Minds Black Home School and Education Expo and this deals with taking control of African American children's education okay um, there are going to be a lot of uh, workshops today, and you have a lot of exhibitors also. So I, I'm not sure how many vendors there are. I'm outside of the room. Uh, I'm already set up, but they're playing copywritten music inside, so I don't want to broadcast inside, and it's rather noisy. And it's important for us to take control of our children's education, even if they go to a traditional public school, if they go to a charter school okay there's still supplemental education that parents can do either in the evening on the weekends you can uh create uh homeschooling networks if you go to liberated minds uh expo.com liberated minds expo.com m-i-n-d-s they have resources there to help you with that and these are some of the things that are taking place here at the expo you have uh hey how you doing uh who's that uh miss watson okay how you doing this is a member of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. All right. Um, they, they, they'll have workshops today from experts in homeschooling, specifically homeschooling African-American children. And this is African-centered homeschooling as well. Um, so there have there, been a number of different articles written recently uh, in the past year or so, and you've seen some of my broadcasts talking about this, that deals with how the history of slavery has been incorrectly taught in schools across the country, not just schools where African-American children go, but schools across the country. How y'all sisters doing? Y'all all right? How you doing, sister? Y'all right? Good. How are you, brother? All right. What's your name again? My, my, I've seen you before. Yeah. Okay, good to nice see you. See Michael you and again. Hotel. You Take too. Care. All right, sister. Take care. Um, so there have been a number of different articles written about this, uh, how the history of slavery is being incorrectly taught in schools across the country. 
And one of the reasons why more African American parents are homeschooling their children is because one, they want to, to protect them from bullying. Two, they, they're trying to protect them as much as possible from uh, racism and discrimination. Three, they want to make sure that they have a good foundation in understanding their history and culture, which builds self-esteem, self-development, self-worth, okay? And oftentimes, they're not getting this in traditional schools. Now, there's some traditional schools that do an excellent job, okay, in, in building self-esteem and teaching uh, our children their history. The majority of them are not. OK, now you have teachers. I'm not saying you don't have teachers who are not dedicated teachers. You do have them. OK, but what we have found is that oftentimes the teachers, even though they mean well, they are ill equipped with the proper resources and the proper education to actually teach our children. OK, so this does not mean that you don't have dedicated teachers who are overworked underpaid taking money out of their pockets to buy resources that the school district is not providing them that is true you do have those teachers and those teachers deserve a raise also okay and this is one of the things this past summer we saw teachers i think it was virginia and a couple other states we saw them having massive strikes okay massive strikes demanding a pay raise they're talking about how they're working two and three jobs have masters masters degrees working two and three jobs to make it as a teacher okay so we see a lack of investment when it comes to teacher salaries we see a lack of investment when it comes to resources also and these by the way these were white teachers if white teachers are out here crying that they're not making enough money and they got to work two and three jobs just to make it then what do you think what, what do you think is happening to african-american teachers okay so when we look at homeschooling our children there are different ways that you can do it it doesn't mean that you have to sit down with your child face to face for eight hours a day it may be three hours maybe four hours maybe two hours one day maybe four hours one, one day maybe two hours okay at this expo you'll find people that have curriculums you'll find different ways of doing this all right and then also what's important to understand is that your child may still go to a traditional school okay but there's supplemental materials that you can use and at my vendor table it's already set up inside i have a lot of my dvd lectures a lot of my recent presentations presentations dealing with the film black panther uh, presentations dealing with uh come on by brother um i just did one in may that i, I just put on dvd a couple weeks ago uh, this deals with the history of why African Americans switched from the Republican Party to the Democratic Party. A lot of people don't know this history. They think it's because of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. That's not true. I heard Reverend Al Sharpton. I hear, I hear him say that on his radio show. That's, that's not true. By 1960, two-thirds of African Americans had already switched over to the Democratic Party. And see, even though I listen to Reverend Al Sharpton's radio show almost every day, basically for 13 years, keeping it real, that's his name of his radio show. Um, and I, this is not an attack on him. Uh, but what happens when you got leaders leading the people and they don't know the history of the people they're leading? What happens? This is not an attack on any of these leaders. I know they get death threats. I know they're out here sacrificing their lives, things like this. This is not an attack. But what I'm saying is, is that the foundation is African history and culture. This gives us our VIPs, our values, our interests, and our principles. This influences our economics and our politics. It's your history and culture that influences your agenda. If you don't understand the history and culture of the people that you are leading, how can you lay out an agenda for a people to get where you say they should get? So if you don't understand the fact that the, the reason why African Americans left the Republican Party and went to the Democratic Party is because we were pushed out going back to the Lily White movement in 1928 and the Southern strategy in 1928 that the Republican Party implemented to get Herbert Hoover elected as president and they targeted five southern states, former Confederate states, to lure southern segregationist Democrats to vote for Herbert Hoover. And they ignored issues of African Americans and, 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 and African Americans crying out about the rise of the Ku Klux Klan, crying out and not getting their issues met. If that foundation is not there, you don't have an understanding of this history, then all this other stuff, a lot, a lot of this other stuff is going to maybe well intentioned, but it's not going to get you where you say you should get so for instance you trying to go on a trip and you say you want to go to Cleveland 
so you lay out you lay out a uh, 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 a a map you you lay out a um, a plan to get to Cleveland, but you meant Cleveland, Tennessee, and not Cleveland, Ohio. You, the, where you were trying to get to was not properly defined, so therefore the 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 road map that you laid out to get there is taking you to the wrong place. All right, so we have Alex, uh, Swollen, Sandy, Yancey Smith. Okay, but everybody check this out. Because there's a, there's a Cleveland, Tennessee. A lot of people don't know this. There's a Cleveland, Ohio. Okay, you have to clearly define where it is you're trying to get. Check this out. Teaching hard history, American slavery. Teaching hard history, American slavery from the Southern Poverty Law Center. This is a 52 page study that documents how the history of uh, slavery is being incorrectly taught in schools across the country and uh, one of the things they did was a uh, so you can download this from splcenter.org southern poverty law center splcenter.org teaching hard history and one of the things so I, I took i downloaded it took it to the printer got it printed up one of the things that they do is document how the history of slavery is being incorrectly taught and then they lay out strategies to better correctly teach the history one of the things they did to document uh their premise is that they um, did a survey of 1,000 high school seniors, okay? They did a survey of 1,000 high school seniors and they found that um, only, it was an online survey, they found that only 8% of 1,000 high school seniors surveyed knew that slavery was the central reason why the Civil War was fought. Only 8% out of 1,000 high school seniors surveyed knew that slavery was the central reason why the civil war was fought it wasn't states rights it was over the right to maintain slavery and when you read their statements of secession texas mississippi uh these various uh states these 11 confederate states they tell you in their statements of secession that slavery and 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 maintaining enslaved africans is essential to their way of life essential to maintaining their wealth okay they tell you this um about 30 about 34 percent did not know that uh let me see what was it 68 percent of them 68 percent did not know that it took a constitutional amendment to formally end slavery which was the 13th amendment ratified december 6 1865 adopted december 18 1865 68 percent of the 1000 high school senior survey did not know that it took a constitutional amendment to uh, formally in child slavery. So what does this mean? This means two things. One, their parents did not teach them. Two, the schools did not teach them. These are high school seniors who are going to graduate, go out into the real world. And what happens is if this history is not corrected, this is why the history of African Americans has to be taught in every, sorry about that, kick the tripod. This is why the history of African Americans has to be taught in every school across the country. This impacts policies. This is something I'm going to talk about in my presentation on Sunday. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, presenting 10.45 a.m. to 11.45 a.m. on Sunday, July 21st, dealing with six principles of political self-defense and how policies impact the economic conditions of African Americans, because we don't understand the connection between us. This is something I was trying to explain to people in 2016 who were running around telling black people don't vote, which is dumb as hell. Where are those people now? Because I can show you over 100 policies that Trump has reversed that President Obama had in place. We can look at the Department of Justice. People are crying about what happened with Eric Garner and Attorney General William Barr nominated by Donald John Trump, who uh, who refuted these attorneys in the Civil Rights Department of the Department of Justice who said there was enough evidence to charge Officer Daniel Pantale uh, Pantaleo, okay? The, the, so you got to go read the New York Times articles about this. Read the uh, uh, NBC News articles that I wrote about this. People respond to the headline. You got to read the article. When you actually read the articles on this, there were there were career attorneys in the in the Civil Rights Division of the Department of Justice who said there's enough evidence to charge Officer Pantaleo with uh, violating the civil rights of Eric Garner. Because when, when the feds get involved in this, they're not charging him with murder. The only thing they can charge him with is violating someone's civil rights. The, the standard that has to be met to get a conviction on that is very high. You have to prove what's called willful intent 
willful intent. You have to prove that the officer willfully intended to deprive someone of their civil rights. The burden of proof is not that the officer actually did deprive someone of their civil rights. That's not what you have to prove. You have to prove willful intent, which goes to state of mind, which is very hard to prove. You have to prove that the officer willfully intended to do this. Well, you had attorneys in the Civil Rights Division of the Department of Justice who said there's enough evidence to charge him. You had attorneys in the uh, U.S. Attorney's Office, I think it was Brooklyn or in New York, who disagreed and said there was not enough evidence to charge him. So Attorney General William Barr, who was against holding police officers accountable, this is one of the reasons why he was nominated by Trump. When the only reason was also that 19 page uh, essay that he wrote talking about the powers of the presidency and basically saying that a president cannot be, uh, cannot can commit obstruction of justice, a president uh, can, um, uh, basically uh, not be charged with a crime, things like this, this unsolicited 19-page memo, okay? Barr, Attorney General William Barr, what he did was he sided with the U.S. Attorney's Office against the attorneys in the Civil Rights Division. And that's why Pantaleo was not charged. This is an example how elections have consequences. Who nominated, who nominated Attorney General William Barr? That was Donald Trump. Who confirmed him? The U.S. Senate. Who controls the U.S. Senate? Republicans. See, this is what happens when you don't understand that a presidential election is not one person versus another person. This is why I was trying to, this is what I was explaining to people in 2016. This deals with law and policies for the next 20 or 30 years. This deals with the Department of Justice. When first Trump nominated Jeff Sessions, Jefferson Beauregard Sessions III, okay, from who was a U.S. who was a U.S. senator from Alabama, Jeff Sessions is totally against holding police officers accountable. This is why when Sessions became Attorney General, confirmed by the U.S. Senate, Republican-dominated U.S. Senate, people don't understand elections have consequences. This ain't about personalities. This is about understanding policies and laws and how politics is the legal distribution of scarce wealth, power, and resources, and the writing of laws, statutes, ordinances, amendments, and treaties, the adoption, interpretation, and enforcement, and how politics impacts every aspect of your life, from the water you drink, to the air you breathe, to the food you eat, to the to the, the rate of speed that you can drive down the street or the expressway without getting a ticket, okay, to the, to the zoning of where certain businesses are in proximity to churches and schools, okay? Okay? The, 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 the zoning that determines that you can have a certain number of gas stations in the city, a certain number of, 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 of fast food places, things like this. That, deal, that deals with your zoning board. That's something that black people don't even look at. Well, who's controlling the zoning board? The zoning board determines all, all, all of this. That deals with policies, okay? So what happens is, is people, the, the mistake African Americans made, and, and I'm speaking specifically to African Americans, I know 53% of white women voted for Trump. Is that a surprise? I mean, is that a surprise? If you if, if, if you were, if you were paying attention and watching my radio shows and my broadcasts during 2016, okay, we saw that that could very well happen. What we didn't understand is two things. One, how the Electoral College works, and that you got to get 270 votes in the Electoral College. The popular vote matters, but it's not the overall popular vote. It's the popular vote by state. So when I was at the Black Agenda, I'm on the Black Agenda tour. We're coming to Atlanta, August 3rd. Meet GX, Jice Johnson, David Banner, Michael M. Hotel. Go to the Black Agenda on Tour.com, the Black Agenda on Tour.com for more information. Last week we were in Chicago at the Query Event Center. And in my presentation, dealing with the six principles of political self-defense, I said the presidency is not won by winning debates. The presidency is won by winning states. This is what we don't understand. Okay, so people are saying, oh, well, I'm going to vote for Kamala Harris because she can go toe to toe with Donald Trump on the debate stage. I'm going to vote for this candidate because they can go toe to toe with Donald Trump on the debate stage. Dude, that's the hype. That's the hype being pushed by MSNBC and CNN so they can raise, so they can increase ratings and raise the amount they charge corporations to advertise. 
the politics, well, political science, the experts in political science know that it's not, you don't win the presidency by winning debates. You win the presidency by winning states. You have to win the popular vote in a state to win the electoral college votes associated with the state to get to 270. NBC News had an article yesterday. We posted it on our Facebook fan page. Read the damn article. This article talks about how Trump could lose the popular vote by 5 million in 2020 and still win the electoral college because how states like Texas and Arizona that have the largest amount of electoral college votes because they have the largest populations, he could lose those. And if he wins Florida, North Carolina, Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and some other states, he can still get to 270. We don't understand this. This is understanding strategy. This is understanding how this game is played. And then we have to understand the rapid voter suppression that took place in 2016. Voter suppression coming from Russian intervention into the 2016 election that I've told, talked to you about extensively. Go back and watch my broadcast. And then voter suppression taking place from the Republican Party. This is why Democrats were launching uh, uh, lawsuits against the, the Republican Party in Ohio and uh, uh, some other states uh, dealing with this rapid voter suppression that was taking place. But what we still don't understand is that we had the votes to stop Trump, black people. African Americans had the votes to stop Trump and we still don't understand this. I've done an extensive presentation called African American Resistance in the Era of Donald Trump, Voter Suppression, Reparations, and How Elections Have Consequences, okay? So Erica said the Electoral College contradicts the right of folks to vote, okay? You can make that argument, but the Electoral College is not going anyway, anywhere, period. Well, how do you amend the U.S. Constitution to make any change to the U.S. Constitution, to amend the Constitution? There have been 27 amendments. You have to, the people has to pass the House of Representatives by a two-third majority vote. It has to pass the U.S. by a two-thirds majority vote. It has to be signed into law by the president. Then it has to be ratified by three-quarters of the state legislatures by a two-thirds majority vote. There are 50 state legislatures. Three-quarters is 38. You need 38 states to pass a to amend the Constitution. So it's it's cool to say, oh, it does this, it needs to be a So if you're not going to do that, it don't make no sense to talk about that. What we have to understand is how to win the Electoral College game. We don't understand that. Republicans do. This is why we have rapid voter suppression in Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, some other key states to shave off one or two percentage points. Trump wins Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania by 78,000 votes. Listen to me. Jill Stein got 50,000 votes out of Michigan. Why? Trump won Michigan by 10,704 votes. 10,704 votes is what he won Michigan by. Two tenths of a percentage point. Okay? He won Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania by 78,000 votes. Here's what people don't know. There were 16.4 million African Americans registered to vote in 2016. What percentage voted? 59.6%. That's only about nine and a half million. There were 16.4 million. Pew Research Center, go read the article. I've talked about it before. Joanne Reed talked about this on AM Joy. Pew Research Center, Center has the documentation. It, it talks about how the uh, turnout of African-American voters in 2016 was a 20-year low. What is that tie to? The rapid voter suppression that took place. 14 new states had new voter ID laws. Why? Because Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act that we don't understand, which ties into history and law, Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act was gutted by the Supreme Court case of Shelby County versus Holder of 2013. U.S. Supreme Court, they're focusing on dealing with law for the next 20 or 30 years. Republicans have a, uh, have a purpose. African-American is trying to make it to the first of the month to the end of the month and don't understand policy don't understand an agenda okay are not operating based upon a plan see republicans understood we trying to get to here we want to maintain control of the u.s supreme court we want we want control of the federal bench of the federal courts so trump is nominated by the 145 federal judges which is a lifetime appointment Okay, we don't understand that. Republicans said we want to reverse Roe versus Wade, 1973. We want control of the U.S. Supreme Court. We want control of the of the federal courts. Okay, so they had a purpose. Okay, 
A lot of people that voted for Trump didn't like him, but they said, this is our purpose. This is what we want. So this is the food that's gonna get us there. That's why many of them voted. Now, a lot of it, some of it was cultural anxiety, okay? Okay, a fear of a browning of America. But the law, but the, see, they were operating based upon purpose. And they said, this is the person. See, a lot of them, he wasn't their first choice. But when it came down to the end, they said, this is the purpose. This is the person who's going to be able to help us fulfill our purpose. To understand your purpose, you have to understand history. You have to understand your history. If you're not operating based upon purpose, then you sit your ass at home. And then you wonder what happened. See, this is what we have to understand. Your thoughts create feelings. Your feelings create actions and behaviors. Your actions and behaviors create results. This is based upon us understanding our history and culture, understanding how laws and policies impact every aspect of our life. This is why an election ain't about one person versus another person. It's about ideology. It's about law for the next 20, 30 years in the future. Okay? This is what we don't understand. All right, so liberatedmindsexpo.com. Visit liberatedmindsexpo.com. Uh, this is taking place Saturday and Sunday. I'm here all day. Come on now. Um, I know for one day it's $45. They have discounts for couples and families. Visit the website. Uh, there should be a link on the website that takes you to Eventbrite. Eventbrite. Okay, you can buy tickets there. It's going to, uh, I think it's going to be higher at the door uh, if you buy tickets at the door, but you can buy tickets on Eventbrite, okay? And um, this Queen Thais speaking here in the background. So they're going to be 40 life changing workshops, 140 vendors, family vibrations, great fun for everyone. Uh, they have workshops for children also. Here are the flyers. Uh, we have this also at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. We've got the information there as well. The Liberated Minds Black Homeschool and Education Expo at the Georgia Piedmont Center here. Uh, we're in the Atlanta area. Come on out today. And uh, you can also uh, donate to the African History Network if you like this type of information. PayPal.me forward slash the AHN show. PayPal.me forward slash the AHN show or at our website africanhistorynetwork.com africanhistorynetwork.com click on the yellow donate button all right um listen to the african history network show sundays 9 p.m to 11 p.m eastern standard time on 9 10 a.m the superstation they're playing major league baseball so it's preempting my show some sundays for a few weeks but if you go to our website africanhistorynetwork.com Information is there, how to listen to the podcast and watch my uh, watch the show and the archive shows on YouTube and Facebook, okay? Um, Rashida said, I'm a newly elected official. It is vital that you vote in your local elections. Local elections are important. Local elections connect to national elections. It's not separate. Local connects to last national. We understand that the, come on, my sisters. We understand, we understand the federal budget is about 4.7 trillion and the federal budget is, is submitted from the president to the house of representatives it's confirmed by congress the federal budget is about 4.7 trillion dollars a reallocation of taxpayer dollars and the dollars go from the federal government to the state to the counties to the cities okay Local elections, city council, mayor, prosecutor, all that's important. County executive, county commissioner, state legislature, governor. It's the state legislature that redraws the congressional districts. It's the state legislature that redraws the congressional districts based upon the census, based upon the U.S. census. The congressional districts are redrawn based upon the, the party that has the party that has the political power in the, the, the party that is in charge of the state legislature, Republican or Democratic Party, whoever has the most in the state legislature, they're the ones that redraw the congressional districts, okay, every 10 years. The census is so important. This is what people don't understand. The census is tied to funding and congressional districts. Why? The U.S. House of Representatives, what determines how many seats in the House of Representatives a particular state has is based upon population. 
how they determine population based upon the U.S. census. So when you have Trump talking about putting in a citizenship question on the U.S. census, and it hasn't been on the census in about 60 or 70 years, that's designed to drive down people of color, immigrants, undocumented immigrants, responding to the census. Because the census was created by the U.S. Constitution. The first census was taken in 1790. It's not designed to count every citizen. It's designed to count every body in the country, not every citizen. So when you are talking about putting that question on the census, then what this does is this will reduce the number of immigrants, undocumented immigrants responding, which will reduce populations in a lot of democratic states. It reduced population, which means they could very well lose congressional representation. They can lose the number of members in the House of Representatives that they have. And if they lose congressional representation, that reduces the number of electoral college votes associated with the state, which reduces their power in the electoral college and it increases the power that Republican states have in the electoral college. We don't understand how this stuff works. How, what determines how many electoral college votes a particular state has? You take the number of the members in the House of Representatives a state has. You add to that the number of the members in the U.S. Senate a state has. Well, every state has two, every state has two U.S. Senators. That's based upon the U.S. Constitution. The House of Representatives is based upon population. So if you talk about, and the population is determined by the U.S. Census. So if you talk about reducing the number of people counted in certain states, then you are affecting funding that those states get because funding is based upon population. You also are you also are negatively impacting their political power because you're reducing the number of represent number of representatives they have in the House of Representatives. And then you are reducing the number of electoral college votes associated with, with that state. So you're talking about you're talking about shifting the balance of power. And we don't understand things like this because we don't understand electoral college. This is why it's cool to say the electoral college needs to be abolished. Most people who say that don't even know the process to abolish it. But I'm telling you right now, it's not going anywhere. So you got to understand how it works and understand winning the game to get the 270 electoral college votes to win the presidency. It's not about the overall popular vote. Hillary Clinton won. She beat Trump by 2.9 million popular votes. But she lost it in the electoral college because it is based upon the number of votes you get per state. And that's what we don't understand. Visit our website, get, get my lecture that I have dealing with the whole history of the electoral college and how it works, things like that. That's at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Also, my presentation, African American Resistance in the Era of Donald Trump, Voter Suppression, Reparations, and How Elections Have Consequences. Well, I'll go deep into all this stuff and explain this. Okay, Cecilia, all right. And then you can donate to the African History Network. That helps me when I have to travel, helps with expenses, helps finance our radio show, um, all of this stuff. Uh, PayPal.me forward slash the AHN show. PayPal.me forward slash the AHN show. And then also um, the African, uh, also AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, okay? Sandy said this is, Sandy said this is what type of content should be presented in the debates. People do not have the level of understanding. Well, see, the, uh, uh, the, see, the debates, people are putting forth their plans and ideologies, okay? What we have to have is that we have to have community organizations and community forums across the country that teach our people how all this stuff works. And this is why I deal with principles of political self-defense. 
and this is what I'm doing on the Black Agenda Tour, okay? It's coming to Atlanta August 3rd. Go to the Black Agenda on Tour.com. Oh, yeah, the Black Agenda on Tour.com. I'll be uh, back in Atlanta August 3rd. We're going to uh, Washington, D.C. We're going to some other states I don't have in front of me. It's, it's on the website, okay? But community organizations, we have to explain to our people how politics impacts every aspect of their life, not just the money they have in their pocket or their bank account or their 401k plan, but also the tax rate that they pay, also the quality of air that they breathe, the quality of water that they drink, okay? The, the, the FDA dealing with the regulation of food, okay? The, the, the Secretary of Education and the Education, the, the Department of Education dealing with Betsy DeVos, all this stuff. We don't understand these things, okay? If we understood this, and, and, and the other thing is, last thing, I gotta, get, I gotta get out of here, get back to my table in here. Republicans fear the African-American vote more than we value the African-American vote. If, if Republicans didn't fear our vote, there would not have been 14 new voter ID laws for the 2016 election targeting African Americans to suppress our vote. If they did not fear, if they did not fear our vote. They fear our vote more than we understand the power of our vote and respect our vote. Okay? This is why the people telling you don't vote, the people who are telling you don't vote in 2016, and the people telling you don't vote today, none of them can explain any of this stuff to you. I guarantee you, none of them can explain any of this stuff to you. Because if they could explain it to you, they would, and they would understand how this impacts economics. Nobody wants to talk about how Trump's 35-day government shutdown, partial government shutdown, devastated African Americans. Nobody wants to talk about that. Nobody wants to talk about the impact. I've done presentations dealing with this. Go back and check it. Nobody wants to talk about how Trump's tariffs on soybeans. I'm just talking tariffs deal with China has drastically negatively impacted soybean farmers, especially African American soybean farmers. Okay? John research uh, John Boyd, John Boyd Jr. John Boyd Jr. is with the um, the Black Farmers Association. He's been interviewed by Roland Martin. He's been interviewed on MSNBC. He talked about during the government shutdown how soybean farmers were being devastated and black soybean, soybean farmers were being devastated by Trump's tariffs. And then he talked about how because of the government shutdown, the $16 billion that Trump allocated as subsidies to farmers who were negatively impacted by his tariffs, the money was delayed because of because of Trump's damn shutdown. This is this, this has economic ramifications. We don't understand this stuff. Okay? My degree is not in history, it's in business administration. I've been studying history for 27 years. My degree is in business. All right, and then lastly, download, download this right here. This is from the Congressional Black Caucus. CBC.house.gov. We have a lot to lose. We have a lot to lose. Solutions to advance black families in the 21st century. Solutions to advance black families in the 21st century. This was the 125 page agenda that the Congressional Black Caucus presented to the Donald Trump and the Trump administration in March of 2017. This was the 125 page agenda. We need to download this. This can be part of an overall agenda. One of the great things about this is that the first thing they do is lay out some history of African Americans to deal with how we got into this predicament. That's on page eight. Then they lay out all different types of issues that we that's negatively impacting the African American community, everything from voting rights to criminal justice reform, economic justice, education, workforce, health care, environmental justice, rural America, because more African Americans live in rural America today than 20, 30 years ago. All right. Then they lay out all these policies, all these all these policies in the third section that address the issues in the sec second section, sec in the second uh, section. All right. So this is this is important. And then 
this one right here cbc.house.gov cbc.house.gov that is the official website of the congressional black caucus this one right here what did trump do what did trump do the first 100 days so what this does this is from the congressional black caucus also because i hear people talk about the congressional black caucus and what do they do blah 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 they never they never show you any of this information that i'm showing you i guarantee you they don't show you this information because I, I do research so this one right here is from the Congressional Black Caucus. What this did was this dealt with the first 100 days of the Trump administration. And they lay out 100 items in here. And they show you how Trump's policies, how his nominations, all the nominations to different departments, things like that. They show you how this negatively impacted the African-American community. So they, so they show you the connection between policy and impact. They show you the connection between policy and conditions, okay? And they call it a state woke list. This is good for millennials, because unfortunately, fortunately, a lot of millennials don't understand politics. All right, this is at cbc.house.gov also, okay? Uh, Congressional Black Caucus. What, what did Trump do? Because remember, Trump asked African Americans, he was speaking to a largely white audience, but he asked African Americans, what the hell do you have to lose? And we didn't realize, well, I told y'all what was gonna happen. People didn't pay attention. He reversed over 100 policies President Obama had in place. He has gutted the, the Department of Justice, uh, reversed policies dealing with uh, uh, holding police officers accountable, backed off on the investigations into the patterns and practices of police departments, gutted the Department of Education. They've gutted the civil rights uh, departments at various departments across the board. Uh, he's, he, he, he's weakened the, uh, the, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, all this stuff. We don't understand this, thing, okay? And then this one right here. This is the first one, there's a second one, Indivisible, a practical guide for resisting the Trump agenda. Indivisible, this is at Indivisible Guide, G-U-I-D-E, -I -I indivisibleguide.com, okay? Indivisible. The second one came out a few months ago. What this is, you had former congressional staffers who looked at the strategies that the Tea Party used to fight against President Obama, and they put all those strategies into this document to fight against Trump. It's called Indivisible. I first found out about this on the Rachel Maddow show, and I've been following it ever since, and it's exploded, okay? And you have people who are organizing all across the country because of this document. And what this document does, it shows you how to interact with your member of Congress and you're a member of the U.S. Senate. They have form letters in here for you to send. They show you how to interact with them face to face, all this stuff. They show you how to put pressure on your member of Congress. See, we don't understand stuff like that. White people do. White people understand things like this. This is why you talk to any elected official, they tell you white people get in their face, they call them, they send them emails, things like that. We don't understand how to use that type of leverage, all right? Indivisible, download this also, all right? Okay, look, I got to get out of here. I got to get back to my table. Uh, remember, okay, so you can post uh, more comments here. I'll respond to them later when I, um, or this evening when I get back to the hotel. Um, hey, remember at the African History Network, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world because right now it's correct your own behavior, what you do for yourself, what you do to yourself, and what you allow other people to do to you and get away with is based upon what you think about yourself. What you think about yourself is based upon what you have been taught about yourself. What you've been taught about yourself is based upon everything you've read, heard, and seen about yourself, okay? So when you control the radius of a man's thoughts, you can control the circumference of his actions because the mind can't do or teach what it doesn't know. Right now, it's correct wrong behavior. It's not over till we win. Wakanda forever. We'll talk to you later. Peace. All right, guys. Got to get out of here.